The moment you install Python on your computer, you also install SQLite. SQLite is an embedded file-based relational database that can be used in our Python applications without having to install any additional software. So we only need to import a built-in Python library SQLite 3 to use this database. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect to this database, create tables, insert data into tables, and more. So let's get started. So we'll continue with this tutorial in a second, but first I'd like to talk about Medium. Medium is a platform where you can find thousands of Python tutorials, data science guides, and more. You can get unlimited access to every guide on Medium for $5 a month using the link in the description. All right, to start with this tutorial, we're gonna import SQLite. So we write import SQLite 3. And the first thing we're gonna do is create a connection. So we have to connect with the database. So we write sqlite3.connect. And here we have to write the name of this database. And this database doesn't need to be created, but we can create it right now. So we write, we open quotes and we write the name of this database. So in my case, I'm gonna name it students.db. DB is the extension that we're going to use. And well, I'm going to name this as CONN, which actually stands for connection. Uh, and with this, we're creating this students.db. And after we do this, we have to create a cursor. So this cursor is going to help us do many things later, like uh, create a table or insert data in our table. So we need to create this cursor and we use this connection. So we write con that cursor and well, I'm going to name this as C. And with this, we have our cursor and now we have to create our table. So to create a table, we only have to use this C and then use the execute. Um, the execute method. So I write execute and then we have to use SQL syntax. So if you're familiarized with uh, SQL, this part is going to be very easy for you. But if you don't know so much SQL, don't worry because the syntax is easy. So first we have to open uh, quotes. In this case, I'm going to open triple quotes to write in multiple lines. And now what I'm going to do is use this SQL syntax. So to create a table in SQL, we have to use that, C that create a statement. So I write create and then I write table because we're going to create a table. And now we have to give a name to this table. In this case, I'm going to name this table as students. And then I'm going to open parentheses. So I open parentheses. And one little thing that I have to mention is that this students is a table, not to be confused with this students.db because this is a file. This is just a coincidence. And now we have to create uh, the columns. So I'm going to create in this case, three columns. So I'm going to create, uh, since it's a student's data, uh, I'm going to put first the name, then the age, and finally the height. So three columns. And after we write the name of the columns, in SQL we have to specify the data type. So different database management systems have different data types. In SQLite, we have five data types, which are text, integer, real, and two more. But in this case, we're going to use only these three text, integer and real. All right. Now let's specify the data type. First, we have text because names are only texts. Then we have integers because the H is basically a number without a decimal points. And finally, we have a uh, real real is basically a uh, numbers with decimals. So here the height is a number with decimals. So we have these three data types and well, 
Now with this we have the table and a little detail here is that we don't have to add the, the comma in the last row. So I'm going to delete this and with this we're ready to go. So now to save all these changes we have to make a commit. If you know CQ, uh, you know what I'm talking about. So when we commit, we save the changes that we make in, in our database. So to do that, we have to write here uh, con, that stands for connection, and then commit. So with this, we save all the changes. And a good practice is also to close the connection. And to do that, we write con that close. So with this, we close this connection that we opened before. Great, now we can run this script to create this uh, DB file and also to create this table. So now let's go ahead and run this script. So I run and well, we uh, got this message of success. And now let's see here on the left panel what we have. So we see that besides our pi file, we have a DB file and it's the students.db file that we created right here. And also, if we could see this file, we will see that we have a table named students, but we're not gonna see this table right now. Actually, this is an empty table because we don't have data in this table. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put data into this table. And to do that, we have to use the cursor again and write C and use the execute uh, method. So I write that execute and here we have to use again SQL syntax. So I open quotes and use the insert into a statement. So with this, we can insert data into our table. So now I only have to write the name of my table and then write values and specify the values that we want to add. So in this case, I'm gonna add just some random data and well, I'm gonna write first the name, uh, let's name it Mark, then the age 20 and the height uh, 1.9. So this is the data that I'm adding into this table. And this is just one row, but we can also add multiple rows. And to do that, we have to use a different method. Instead of using execute, we have to use the execute many method. So I write C that execute many. And here the syntax is gonna be similar, but it's gonna change a little bit. So I'm gonna copy and paste this and make some changes. So here, this uh, remains the same, insert into students and values. This remains the same, but here, instead of writing the data, we have to write some placeholders. And I'm gonna write these question marks as the placeholders. So this indicates that we're gonna add a certain data, but it's not, actually we're not adding question marks, but we're gonna add like uh, something else. And this thing that we're gonna add is a list. So here, I'm gonna create a list. I'm gonna open here some space and here I'm gonna create a list that I'm gonna name all underscore students. So this is a Python list and inside this Python list, I'm gonna put some tuples. So the first one is gonna be just some random data. For example, John 21, 1.8, then comma, and I'm gonna duplicate. So I'm gonna add three rows with some random data. And then I'm gonna add it to the table. So you can see how to add multiple rows to this table. I'm gonna add the last row and well, this is gonna be, uh, I don't know, Michael, and then, I don't know, 19, 173. Well, we have all this data and now we have to add it to this table. And to do that, we have to specify the list here as an argument of this method. So I write all underscore students and the data that is inside this uh, list is gonna be here. So instead of adding 
just one row, we're adding multiple rows inside this uh, table. Great. Now we can run this and well, we're committing this and well, we're closing that connection. But before running this, uh, we have to command these lines of code because we don't want to create the same table. Actually, we don't want to create any new table. And well, we only want to insert this uh, first uh, data and also this, well, this list. And well, we can run this. I'm gonna run and well, we got this message of success. Everything's fine. And now let's see here on the left, we can see this, uh, this file. And now we can see the data inside this uh, DB file. And there are many ways to see the data inside this file. And the easiest way is just to use this website that I have on the right. Here I have a website named SQLite Viewer. And this website allows us to see data inside this uh, DB file. So the only thing we have to do is just drag this file and put it here. So we just put it here. And as you can see, this uh, website reads this DB file. So we have first uh, the data mark, and then we have this list that we added to with John, David, and Michael. Well, this is the data that we added, and we can easily see the content using this website. And the other way that we can use to see the content inside this DB file is using code. So what we can do here is, uh, again, use the execute method. So we can write C that execute. And then here we can write a query that allows us to see the content inside this table. And well, this is one of the most common uh, statements that we use in SQL and is the select statement. So we write select, then we write this and then from. And this indicates that we want to select all the columns from a table. Here, I'm gonna write the name of the table, which is students. And now to actually see the content, we have to use the fetch all method. So we have to write C that fetch all. And well, with this, we can see the, the result from the query that we are writing here. So now we have to print this. Uh, sorry, we have to print this and well, now we can see the content uh, thanks to this query and thanks to this fetch all. So now we only have to comment this because if we run this code, we're gonna insert again all this data and we don't want that. We only want to see the content inside the, inside the table. So I'm gonna comment this out and well, with this, everything is ready. I'm gonna run this script and as you can see, this is the same data that we got here. So it's the same data that we added. And well, here we have some, uh, we, we have little data, but this could get messy as we add more and more data. So one little trick that you can do here to print this uh, properly is to use a for loop. So here you can simply write uh, here, let me add a new variable. So I'm gonna write, don't know, my, uh, don't know, my data equal to this. And now we can loop through this, my data, and this is a list. So we can do just for i in my data and then print the content inside this list. So we're gonna print each element uh, line by line. So now I'm gonna run this and now you can see that we got this uh, output and now it's displayed much, much better. And that's it for this video. Now that you know more about SQLite, you can use this in different ways. You can use SQLite for web development. You can use it also in data analysis. You can make it work with pandas and you can use it in other different ways. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. That's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.